Yes, guys. Yes, people. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the last episode of Five Things We Learned. After what I think is our fifth win in a row. Another poetic start to the show. Big up to everybody that's locked in. Hit the like button, subscribe, all of that crap. And yeah, to a point, thank God the season's over. It's been an absolute roller coaster for all the wrong reasons. But I guess we ended it on a positive note. And that's why to a point as well, like, why did the season have to end now? Why does it have to end now when we're cooking? You give it, like, another two, three, four months, I might actually be able to get a better understanding of where we are with this coach. Right now, like I've said, it feels like it's just too little too late for me. But it's good to see the players cooking. It's good to see the players continuing to get results. Although I, I say cooking, like we were good for like one half and then the second half we seemed to fall off a little bit. Maybe we throw that down to players being on the beach because like at a 2-0 up, even if you draw, you're not dropping below sixth place. You'd need to lose by about eight goals to get to that point. So maybe, maybe you could say the players are on the beach, but... Yeah, we're going to delve into all of that in today's video. So big up to everybody that's locked in. Hit the like button, subscribe, all of that. I need to shout out the sponsors as well. Big up to Match Bingo. This is Bingo with a twist. Instead of betting on numbers, you have fouls, goals, offsides, and other key moments on the pitch that you are trying to make guesses on. Games are capped at two quid, so you don't have to worry about being responsible. They also offer free games if you just want to try the app out. And 35% of all profits made go to the Stroke Association. So guys, get involved. Click the link down below and join us all over at Match Bingo right now, people. And yeah, we beat Bournemouth 2-1. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. In terms of the first half, like, we were definitely the better team. Uh, we were really good in terms of our build-up play. But throughout the match, in my opinion, I, I think our build-up play was kind of neutered by our decision-making in the final third. Like, Palmer had times where he was holding onto the ball too much. Sterling was good in some moments, a bit wasteful in some moments as well. You could argue the same thing for Jackson as well. Although maybe for the best out of the bunch, you could probably probably say Sterling. Probably say him. I know Palmer won, I think, fan vote man of the match because he laid the ball off to Sterling for the second one, but it wasn't one of his better performances. This game was more about the defence. And to a point, the midfield. Because the midfield did well in the first half. And then, and this leads to my first point. The second half really wasn't the same. It wasn't a good second half from us. Like, I put part of it down to Caicedo coming off. Whether it was because of an injury or not, I'm not too sure. I hope he's not injured. But I would also hope the reason why you took him off was because of an injury or a precaution for an injury. Because if not, and that was tactical, boy. We completely lost control as soon as he came off the field. Bournemouth started playing with more confidence. They started cutting through our midfield. And to be honest, they made the better chances than us in the second half too. We were very lucky that Solanke was wasteful as hell. And we had a couple of key blocks in the second half too. Shout out to Gallagher. Because if that's his last game for Chelsea, that was a good performance from him. Chased the, ball, chased the goalkeeper for the first goal. Um, had a key block towards the end of the match just before Solanke missed the absolute howler at the end of the game. So yeah, if he does end up leaving and this ends up being his last game, thank you. Th thank you for the block. Thank you for the goals at Villa Park and Selhurst Park. Deuces. Peace. But yeah, first point, not a great second half. Not a great second half at all. Thankfully, Bournemouth were wasteful and we defended well. That was about it. But I wanted that second half over and done with from like 70 minutes in. When I saw another seven minutes added time, I was thinking, oh, here we go. Here we go. One more bottled 2-0 lead just for the vibes. Just because proper Chelsea and all of that. But we held on. We showed resiliency. Nice. Love to see that. Big up to the players on that. Um, second point. I, I don't know how many more times we're going to isolate an entire point just for Moises Caicedo but we're going to do it again because yet again he dropped an unbelievable performance and yet and this time he had a goal he finally got his first goal for Chelsea Football Club and what a way to break your deadlock for this club from the halfway line the guy banged it into what well, I guess was the bottom corner 
But hey, what a finish from him. Unbelievable hit. And hopefully now, now that he's finally scored, all the casuals can stop moaning about, oh, Ka Kaiseido has been one of the flops of the season. Oh, for, 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 for his price tag, he's not really been performing to expectations. Thank you again for showing that you never watch Chelsea and you just listen to a bunch of tap narratives from journalists and from pundits. We are not listening to your BS anymore. Kaiseido again has been our best midfielder and if we keep the structure going next season or if we improve on the structure and improve on the coach potentially i can't wait to see how he cooks especially with enzo because this game was another example of how much we miss enzo see what happened when caicedo left the pitch mess absolute mess but, 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 but we, we, we're better off without enzo yeah, maybe when he's not carrying a hernia injury for six months. But again, doesn't fit the narratives. Shout out to Kaiseido though. Been our best midfielder this season. Started a bit slowly, but what an end to the campaign that he's had. And I can't wait to see what food he produces for this football club over the next few years. Because he has been brilliant. Brilliant bar a couple of games this year. He's been really good for us. So shout out Kaiseido. Another player that we've been shouting out a lot over the last few games. Trevor Chalaba. At right back yet again dropped another solid game. Did his job very convincingly. Had some key blocks in the second half. I'm seeing we're looking to sell him for around 25 million. I hope that's not true. I really hope that's not true. Number one. A play Trevor Chalaba is dead ass worth more than that for the fact that he's got what five years left on his contract if even that he might even have more he signed i think a six or seven year deal with us i'm i'm just not too sure about the period of it but yeah he's got a long ass contract he produces consistent performances he's got experience he's actually been around strong chelsea teams that have competed on all fronts i hope we don't get rid of him man like, get rid of um, Hall, Matson, respectfully. Lukaku, disrespectfully. Kepa, Gallagher's going to go cry about it. Yeah, get rid of them. Keep Trevor Chalaba, man. Chalaba's actually really good quality for us. And he would be a good squad player for the team. If he doesn't even continue to develop. And he might even be looked at as a starter for a title winning side. I don't know. But he's the sort of player that I would want to keep within the squad. And I'm also going to say this as well. I would not mind us keeping Gallagher too. I just don't think we're going to do it. This guy. We are got to the end of May. And we haven't even opened contract negotiations with Gallagher. It's done. It's finished. He's probably leaving. Oh well. Here's why it is. Chalaba though. I hope we keep him. I do hope we keep him. Fourth point. I need to shout out the legend. I don't care if he's only been here for four seasons. He is a Chelsea legend in every single right and meaning and definition of the name. His performances for so much of his Chelsea spell have been consistent. In a team like the 12th place Chelsea team last season that was scrubby as hell, he was the only player that was performing to a consistent level throughout the season. 38 years of age and he's playing like he was, he was 28 years of age. He did start to show signs of decline at the start of this season. But I don't hold that against him at all. 39 years of age and now you're starting to show signs. Wow. Like, congratulations. It took you that long. I've been saying that all season. That's why I'll never ever have a bad word to say about Thiago. I'm glad that he was able to provide his services to this football club. I'm glad we were able to help him get a Champions League, a Club World Cup, a Super Cup. And he helped us get to that as well. He was part of the best um, Champions League winning defence since 1994. He is one of, if not, yeah, he is one of our best centre-backs. We can't say the best. John Terry is still up there. Big up to JT. But Thiago Silva is up there. 100% up there. And he leaves as a Chelsea legend. But like we've been saying, and I think like he said yesterday in his speech, it's not goodbye, it's see you soon. Because uh, we know you're going to come back. Might do a little academy role or something. Might climb his way up the coaching ladder. And could potentially be a future Chelsea coach. Not anytime soon. You do need to get your badges. You do need to get your experience and all of that. But, yo, I hope to see him back at the bridge one day. And the family's still going to be there too. Because his son's going to be at the academy. I think Silva's going to Brazil on his ones. 
and I hope he enjoys his retirement. Brother, I don't speak on behalf of Chelsea fans a lot, but I do feel like I speak on behalf of Chelsea fans for this one. I say you're an absolute legend. We love you and we hope the best for you in Brazil. Go shine. Go shine and enjoy your retirement and thank you for your services. Proper Chelsea in every essence of the world. Um, final point, sixth place. Yay. I'm still not over celebrating that. Because I know I saw everybody moaning yesterday. Oh, he's never happy. Oh, he's always negative. We could have got fourth. We were five points off fourth. Go sit on the floor. Stop moaning to me, all right? We could have got fourth place with better coaching and better game management. I'm not listening to anything other, other than that because I can list off the games. Forest at home. Bournemouth away. Manchester United away. Everton away. Wolves at home. Um, Sheffield United away. All of these games could have been managed better. Brentford away. And this isn't just all on Poch, by the way, because there's a reason why I've ignored games like Arsenal, why I've ignored games like, well, both Arsenal games, because we were going to lose both of them anyway. There's a reason why I've ignored games like Wolves away, even though I think Poch is partly to blame on that. We could have been two or three goals up by halftime and it would never have the second half would never have mattered anyway. Um, Brentford at home, even though I don't think the Sassy should have played right back and we could have given Madueke some overlapping support, we had enough chances to win the game and the referee screwed us in that match too. So I'm not really going to blame him for those matches, but there was enough matches that we could have been managed better for that would have seen us in fourth place. And that's why I'm saying this season is progressive, but it's not a success. A success would have been for us to get back into the top four like Bowley and the board originally said we should have done and they were proved correct on that, by the way, because of how close we were to fourth, even with all the injuries. So, we could have got fourth place. We underachieved on that and we failed to get a domestic cup. So, we underachieved on that metric too. That's it. It has been progressive, but still a failure for the standards of where this football club should be at, which is top four as a minimum. If you don't understand that, you don't understand the mentality of this football club. You don't understand the mentality of this football club over the last 20 years. And if you want to lower the standards, you do that. I will not. If Poch makes it to next season, we'll see if he hits the ground running. For this season, he hasn't shown me enough to have belief in him. It's as simple as that. Cry about it. But big up to everybody that's locked in. Hit the like button, subscribe, all of that. Still potch out. We'll see what happens next season. And up the Chelsea.